Oh, wow. That was the lackluster legend. Show. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. Let me move a little this way so you can see the door of wrestling, where true legends are. I like thank everyone for watching. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for their support. I'd also like to thank you guys for showing some patience with me again. It's that weird holiday season, and nothing ever works right. And today, folks, before I talk about wrestling, here's a valuable lesson that I've learned here in Florida. It is actually easier to purchase a gun here in Daytona Beach than it is to find a dentist in your area. There we go. More stuff to do tomorrow. Jeez, oh Pete. Enough about that. I have to get to some thank yous, though. Yes, thank you very much, Edgy Guerrero. Yes, we do share the same thoughts on some things. You, sir, are, have definitely won twice in your match because you got that six count. Kazarni! Man, I'm running out. I still have to make freaking. Fife Dog. I'll do that. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out some time for that. But Kazarni, you sir, are definitely a master of that air guitar.
I am Nitro. A man with that kind of name, you know, he's partying with his briefcase boombox. And cover roll, you don't win by roll up, you win by dirty pin. And with that being said, let's talk about a little pro wrestling. Um, it was Monday Night Raw. An interesting show. Um, it was a legend show. And it they didn't really have the big legend show up either. Like I know Hulk Hogan was there. But there was no Stone Cold Steve Austin. There was no Rock. I don't know. I think one of the things is that I mentioned, and the reason why I gave some shout outs, is because is Alicia Fox really a legend? I don't know. If she came over here, I'd say she's a legend. Say she's legendary. Especially if, if she was on the couch with me. But, whoa. That's a whole other issue. But yeah. So, pull to you, my YouTube audience. Is Alicia Fox a legend? Or even legend worthy? Just ponder that for a while. So let's get to Monday Night Raw. Um, it starts off, the new day is on Miz TV. And I'll tell you what, John, huh, I, I can't call him John Morrison. He's Johnny Mundo. He was playing the funny man, Miz is a straight guy. John Morrison, John Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact. He has such character. He has definitely some comedic chops about him. I think he picked that up. I mean, his wrestling skills and prowess is known throughout the world. But he really picked up, I think, a lot of his talking skills and his his timing, his line delivery, all of his character work. I'll tell you what, I miss Lucha Underground so much because I think that's where, I'll, at least I think, that's where a lot of his development came in. He was there in Lucha Underground. He was there enjoying himself. He had a he had a wonky contract, yeah. But he was Johnny Mundo, though. He was king of Lucha Underground. And I think that actually taught him. And he probably saw some terrible material over there in Lucha Underground, but he made it look like gold. And that's one of the things that the pro wrestlers today are lacking, especially if they come up in a very strict, regimented WWE system. They, they miss that exposure to other things. Because Johnny Mundo, I'll tell you what, he sold a show on Miz TV. He was good. And then, of course, it's, it's a legend night, so you can't have a legend night without holla, 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 baby. Uh, Teddy Long came out, said Miz and Morrison, they were going to face The Undertaker, and Adam Pearce said, no, listen, you can't have The Undertaker here. He, he's not here. He, he doesn't wrestle for us anymore. Oh, okay, so holla, 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 player. We're going to have a tag team match, and it's next. So, the first match was The Miz and Morrison taking on The New Day. This was, at, uh, it was an okay match. Um, the Miz gets beat up a lot. He's in The New Day's corner. The New Day does all their classic tag team work. I forget if they did the Unicorn Stomp or not. I was trying to cook dinner a little bit during this. Again, I had to speed up my time because I do have to wake up actually a little bit later than I did last week, which is which made me feel so much better, by the way. You don't realize, like, with that extra... A little tweak of sleep can do. And I have to get that freaking dentist appointment in. Preferably to that hot dentist chick. No, no, not Britt Baker. Boo, Britt Baker. But yeah, um, The Miz got isolated a little bit in the New Day's corner. Again, very classic beatdown of The Miz in their corner. Great tag team work. Uh, the Miz, eventually, he acts as a distraction. When uh, Morrison gets in the ring... We have a big kick by Morrison. And likewise, Miz tags himself. Uh, Miz ta tags in. Tags, well, yeah, tags in to Mundo. Um, uh, the Miz acts as a distraction to the referee. Morrison plastered Kofi in the face. That was pretty cool looking. 
again, another thing the wrestlers from WWE don't understand is that in different organizations, they tend to work a little bit differently. Kofi Kingston is probably used to the much, for lack of a better term, a softer match. Mundo's, he, he, he's, been in, he's been in AAA. Enough said. Like, yeah, it's AAA. Ah, ah, ah. It's so great as AAA. I'll tell you what, I wonder, I do have to mark down when Rey de Reyes is. I have to cover that. That would be good. But yeah, then I think in like two more weeks, roughly, it's going to be hard to kill, I think, by impact. Indeed. And then Revolution's coming up in February. You have know, the Royal Rumble at the end of the month. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be covering. Oh, well, I'm going to be ahead of myself, but I'm, I won't be watching New Year's Evil. That's, that's a ripoff of what I did. Boo, NXT. You should be copyright violated for stealing my ideas. I want my quarter. But enough about my rant and rave about that. Um, Kofi eventually gets tries to go for his comeback. He gets caught in the heel corner. The Miz, he could not hit the figure four. Kofi is the SOS. And I'll tell you what, of all people, Morrison makes a great hot tag. Because Morris, uh, John Morrison, um, yeah, John Morrison and Xavier Rose got tagged at the same time. Morrison... He acted more like it was his hot tag than Xavier Woods was. That was a, that was interesting. I mean, again, he has all that experience, and it's just different that way. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, he has the best hot tag. Woods, again, he takes a fight to both Miz and Morrison. Uh, Mundo, the kicks and forearms are so good. There's also great continuity in the New Day's wrestling moves. Again, Kof, um, Xavier Woods says the rope spot. He gets him in the rope, slides down his back, lands on someone, or he missed him, but then uh, Miz jumped out of the way, but then look, kind of fell right into the sights of Kofi Kingston. So that's that's really good continuity in these tag teams. H however, it was a weird ending. Like, Woods hit the Shining Wizard. There's only one person who uses the Shiniest Wizard as a finisher. That's Tegan Knox. Oh, I don't even know that Xavier Woods has been with Tegan Knox. Uh, oh, that image is, is burning. Oh, my God, no. 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 I'm replacing a dirty image of Paige and Woods, and I'm putting in the place of Paige. Tegan Knox. I just ruined my life. Crap. This is one of those things you can't unthink of now. Boo, Xavier Woods. Boo. He, again, he used the Shining Wizard. He got the win. That kind of irked me a little bit. The Miz and Morrison do deserve... If they're going to take if they're gonna take a bump, they need to take a bigger bump than that to finish off the match. Eh. This is a ham sandwich of a match. And then, let's see here. There was a recap of the Randy Orton destroying the Flyer Fight Funhouse and how he did not set Alexa Blitz on fire, even though I think most of us in WooTube wanted to see her be set on fire. What, what can I tell you? Um, then there was the little thing with R Truth and the New Day on TikTok. Angel Garza came in on, with a roll up, uh, he won the 24 7 championship. Um, yeah. Um, backstage, Angel Garza, he's a new 24-7 championship. He wants to give a rose to Alicia Fox. Oh, how I, how I miss the Scottish supernova saying Alicia Fox all the time. Oh, now I forget his name. But again, the Scottish supernova and Alicia Fox. Yes. We're still making fun. Wow. I, next time I'll mention that. Hey, remember when it was Alicia Fox? Yeah. The Scottish Supernova. He was cool, too. I guess he's back in NXT UK? Or did he do something? I don't. I honestly don't know. I haven't followed NXT UK, period, really. Thursday's my one day off. Even I need a break from pro wrestling. But... Yeah, so uh, Angel Garza, he tries, he's the new 24-7 champion, shows off his belt to Alicia Fox. 
And of course, Tatanka's there, of all people. Tatanka's looking like Chief J Strong, like a young Chief J Strongbow. I wonder how old Chief J Strongbow was when he actually wrestled now. That's another interesting question. Of course, Sergeant Slaughter's there. Get down and give me 50, you maggot. The original gravelly voice drill sergeant. What is your major malfunction, maggot? Wow. I do. I actually thought he passed away. No. No, he didn't pass. I don't know. I forget if, I, if he died or not. And then, oh, Mickey James was there too. Mickey James is hot. Oh, I don't know. Some of those divas for WWE aged really well. Um, then we get to our AJ Styles taking on Elias match. Um, start off right to a headlock. AJ definitely knows how to start a match off. I'll give him all the credit. One of the, probably the best technical wrestlers ever. Um, a good good high flyer. He knows strikes. He knows technical stuff. He can fly. AJ Styles can do it all. Now it goes right into a headlock. Um, AJ again. He gets he gets trapped on the uh, second rope. He gets topped on the top rope, right on top of his neck. Elias takes a little control then. Elias pick, picks him up. Cruella presses him and drops him right on top of a turnbuckle. Kicks him. Kicks him out of the ring. We got a commercial break. Uh, AJ Styles cannot hit the phenomenal forearm. Instead, he ate a knee. Uh, however, as the match continued, there was a good little back and forth between the two. Eventually, AJ Styles hit a brain buster of all moves on Elias. Elias is a big boy. And then he even hit the Styles Clash on Elias. Oh wow, Elias definitely arched his arched his neck for that move. But I'll tell you what, that was a shock. Cause again, it's nice to see AJ Styles when he needs to. He can go into his bag of tricks. He can pull out the, the phenomenal forearm, the Styles Clash, the calf crusher. I'm I'm sure if he, if Vince would ever let him do Spinal Tap again. Wow. Uh, this was a good match. Good match, though. Again, solid cheeseburger match. And, of course, uh, Jackson Riker, who's like the groupie guy, he had to come in with a guitar to, to get AJ. And Omos just, just kicked that guitar right out of Riker, Jackson Riker's hand. He did that quick, too. And then, woo, 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 it's woo, Ric Flair time, baby. And yes, <laughs> woo, because uh, there was a little thing with uh, Sarah and Charlotte, Charlotte Flair. Of course, woo, Mr. Ric Flair himself shows up. Again, he's going to be at every legend show. Uh, so it's Charlotte Flair and Asuka taking on Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans. Charlotte sets off the match. Again, she gets double team after a little flurry. She gets double teamed by Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans. Um, again, Charlotte Flair eventually goes back into her corner. Hits a quick backbreaker. Asuka. Asuka brings so much energy to the ring. Uh, when Asuka was in the ring, I don't know if, it was, if it, I don't know what it was. She just seems a little faster. The pace definitely quickened up. Again, she she carries that energy with her. And granted, she spent. I'm sure Oscar must be totally spent after these matches. But she Oscar's one of the few wrestlers again, like in AJ Styles, that you can say, hey, she left it all out in the ring. Um, yeah, she might mess up once or twice. Might be a potato here and there. But you know what? It's Oscar's. Amazing. That's all him he said. How about that? That's not that bad looking. I thought it'd be worse, but that's okay. Uh, woo! Uh, then, um, Charlotte and Lacey. I don't know. This was getting kind of, kind of like, like old man creepy here. Because Charlotte, because Ric Flair was, was eyeing Lacey Evans. Listen, Lacey Evans could be one of his daughters. That's freaky. And Lacey Evans, and yeah, Lacey Evans could be, yeah, Ric Flair could be Lacey Evans' dad. 
and Lacey Evans could be Ric Flair's daughter. Um, hmm. That's creepy. Woo! But it's woo! Ric Flair, though. Woo! We're gonna have a woo off soon. Because um, what happened, so Charlotte said, like, like slap Lacey around for eyeing her dad. Um, uh, Lacey then eventually gets in the ring against Asuka. Um, uh, she, like, picked Asuka and dropped her, like, right, just started banging Asuka's head against the mat. That looked vicious. Uh, Charlotte Flair got back in. Um, she did her moonsault. Asuka tagged herself in. Asuka, again... Asuka and Charlotte did then did then actually a pretty good move. It was it was um like a backstabber, followed by the natural selection. And then Lacey Evans goes up, Hey Mr. Hey Mr. Daddy. And Ruth was like, Woo! Woo! Um high silent, woo! Profiling, woo! Kiss dealing, woo! Wheeling dealing, woo! Limousine ride, woo! Up all night, woo! Yeah, he got a little too excited there. He has to lay off that little blue pill before these wrestling matches. That's not what the little blue pill is for, there, Mister Ric Flair. But yeah, and then Ric Flair, woo! Pull the Ric Flair and pull Charles leg from underneath her. And this confused Charlotte Flair, and they got stuck in the roll-up by Peyton Royce. Woo! And then, of course, then they'll all, woo! Lacey Evans kissed Ric Flair on the cheek. Whoa! That was a little bit more than friendly there. That's a, that's a not safe for, that's a not safe for work image. Woo! A whole bunch more, woo! Woo! Whoa! Yeah! Woo! Oh, I think I broke my camera there for a moment. I went too fast. Too many woos. So, yeah. Let's see here. See if I look civilized. Woo! Oh, too many woos. That's okay. So, this video is going to be all messed up. I'm fine with that, though. <sighs> Breathe. Oh, um. that one last final woo out and then uh charlotte confronted her dad don't you ever do that again so yeah um just the fact that rick flair got involved it's gonna be a cheeseburger match because of that surprise that was good And then we have Seamus and Drew backstage. Um, Hulk Hogan, brother. Ooh, yeah, brother. 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 Oh, no, that's the Young Bucks pose. There we go. It was there with the Jimmy Mouth of the South Heart. Um, then we have Drew. Drew. <laughs> you know, this was Drew McIntyre's, like, mark-out moment. Um, he was doing all the Hulk poses. This actually seemed really good. And really organic. Uh, it's going to be Claymore Mania. Uh, Drew mentioned he he says his prayers. He takes the vitamins. <sighs> What's the third requirement of Hulk Mania? Prayers, vitamins, and the training, brother. So yeah, um, again he was marking out with Hulk Hogan, whereas Jimmy Moss of the South Heart, he had his he had his microphone on talking to Sheamus. Yeah, Sharon, this is the mouth of this. This is the mouth of, of Southern Ireland. So yeah, that was pretty cool. That was, you know, Drew McIntyre was just marking out for that the whole time. I don't see her. The next match, I, I had too many woos there. Wow, I, I had like a good minute of wooing. Woo! Not enough. No such thing as too many woos. But then we had Matt Riddle taking on Bobby Lashley. And this, I, Matt Riddle went right after Bobby Lashley as if this was an MMA fight. 
this had a really good beginning and, and kind of at the end. Uh, he went right after Bobby Lashley. Not probably a good idea at the time, but not so good at the end for the main reason that Bobby Lashley, again, he went out of the ring and he kind of suckered Matt Riddell outside of the ring, beat him up a little bit, picked him up, fireman carry style, and slammed his head into the steel post. Again, the steel post, that's really the hardest part of the ring. That's steel. Like, they can say, yeah, the apron has wood, wood has give to it. There is also a fair amount of padding on the, on the ring apron. There is no padding on that steel post. Especially if they use the, the NXT style post, where it's just solid steel. Not the LED lighted aluminum post. I can see, okay, the light aluminum post, they give a little bit. That's aluminum. But the heavy steel stuff, eh eh. Cero. No, I can't say Cero that. But Cero give. Miedo. Um, let's see what else happened to Smash. Bobby Lashley then. Again, hit it in here. Camel Clutch, that was good. Matt Riddell eventually got knocked stupid. He sold so well. Uh, and then Matt Riddell whiffed on like an overhead kick. Bobby Lashley sold it because Bobby Lashley was probably told to sell. But that was ter that was a terrible looking kick though. Then there was no Dominator. Um, <laughs> he picked him up um, through style, put him on shoulder and slammed him uh, body first on the ground. Put Matt Riddell in the hurt lock, but the referee did not see it. But you can see when he was in the hurt lock that, that Matt Riddell was tapping. He was tapping out. So, of course, he was like, this, yeah, I won. MVP gets up in the ring. Uh, it was a surprise roll up. Uh, that was uh, that was the bad ending. Bad ending to actually a fairly decent start of a match. This will be a good feud, especially if they keep it within the realm of an MMA competition. Uh, this match itself, though, uh, the way it ended, it's really a ham sandwich. And then see Mark Henry, and he's like, he like broke his leg or something. Because he was on like one of those little um, coaster things. And of course he got confronted by Randy Orton, and, and Randy Orton's like, I want to see how fast he can roll out of here. So yeah, so again, that was a, pr that was a pretty cool thing. Then we had Shannon Baser was going to take on Mandy Rose. Um, Shannon Baser just came out. Beat up Mandy Rose. Yep, outside the ring. Um, the only reason I give this match any any kind of thing above a piece of toast is, well, blonde hair, larger bosoms, and 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 skinny pleather pants. And I'll tell you what I've seen Shayna Baszler when she's out of wrestling gear. Shayna Baszler is actually pretty cute looking. She has that, I know people always make fun of it, but she has that girl next door cute. She's, she's very quiet, very reserved. I want to say a quiet cuteness about her. Like if you saw her in a room, if she wasn't in her wrestling gear, like ready to go, you would never know who she is. She just seems so... She seems so friendly and nice, amicable. I don't want to say forgettable, but like if I saw a lineup of her in like normal gear, I couldn't pick her out of a lineup. You put her in wrestling gear and, and have her all done up the way they do on, on, on WWE. Yeah, I can say that's Shayna Baszler. She like walks into a retail store in like a t-shirt and jeans and you're like, ooh, she's cute looking. Indeed. And not um, what well, whereas like Mandy Rose and, and <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Not coronavirus. Slightus. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Mandy Rose and, and Dana Brooke. Again, you'll you can tell Dana Brooke. Especially if she wears one of those skimpy outfits. Or even if a regular outfit you can tell it's Dana Brooke. What am I saying? Mandy Rose, yeah, a little bit more. Not as much though. 
But, um, so Danderberg says, you know what, I'll fight for my friend. And it's actually a pretty quick match because Shannon Baszler puts on the clutch pretty quickly. And Danderberg does kind of the flip back thing. Did that, uh, a reverse pin for the clutch. However, Shannon Baszler would not let go even though she lost to the three count. Uh, eventually, Mandy Rose, Mandy, yeah, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, they kind of flapjack. Shannon Baszler. <sighs> Just because of the poll they posted. <sighs> you know, I can't do it. Uh, I'm so sorry, all the men out there. This This was a piece of toast. Wow, Molly Holly. Darn, she's hot. She was there with Woo! Rick Flair! Woo! And IRS. I'm actually surprised Randy Orton didn't say something about how he burnt his son's house down. But yeah, who knows? Uh, again he again they Orton confronts them more so Rick Flair than anyone else. It would have been better. It's like, hey, there was some, I think I was in someone's house and I saw her picture there. I burned it down. I didn't realize it was one of yours. If he, or even if he said something like that, it would have been a nice tease to the fact that he burned the fiend. Again, Bray Wyatt is the son of, is a rotundo. Um, just like Bo Dallas, who is somewhere. Actually, Bo Dallas is in the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. <laughs> but that's a whole other issue. Then, let's see here. Um, so, Randy Orton then goes to the ring. He It's his match versus Jeff Hardy. So, it's off classic collar elbow tie-up. It's always good to see that. And a little test of strength there. Um, Jeff was, again, Randy Orton, as he broke it, just did a straight thumb to the eye. So good and vicious as Randy Orton. I don't even know why they had this match. This, Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton is so over and done with. <sighs> Jeff Hardy has nothing to do with The Fiend or Alexa Bliss. This is just like, yep, let's just toss him in there. See what happens. Uh, then Jeff, again, he, when they went to the outside, he just got slammed head first a couple times into the table. And then for good measure, <laughs> Randy slammed the back of his head into the table, and then picked him up and dropped him on the table. <laughs> Randy Orton, man. Then, again, Orton with the joint manipulation with the hand, the wrist, the arm lock. Uh, Jeff makes his comeback. Once he gets over that, yep, classic Randy Orton chin lock. Definitely learned that from his pops. Uh, Jeff eventually does his, hit his flurry of combo moves. He did... I don't know, like, like some kind of like like liver dropkick. That looked absolutely terrible too. Like there, it just seemed like everything was like, oh, yeah, just do something, just do a dropkick. It's like, well, 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 where should you be? It's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Just yeah, so, somewhere in the match, throw a drop. Like he didn't know what to do, and or he didn't get enough ups because he hit him like right in the gut. Actually, it looked a little bit lower than the gut, but everyone said, oh, he drop kicked him in the liver. Yes. The liver, the liver, <laughs> spinning liver kick. <laughs> if you're old enough to remember Beavis and Butt, you know what that reference is. Um, eventually, Orton hit a draping DDT in RKO. Randy Orton wins. Solid Randy Orton match. Um, nothing too special. It was solid though. Cheeseburger match. Then the Lucha House Party. They see Molina. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, caramba. Muy bonita. Si, senora. Senora Molina. Senora Molina. This, of course, raised the Lucha House Party spirit a little bit. Because then they went to go face the Hurt Business. And you know what? For the second time in a row, they won a match they probably should have lost. I was shocked because I watched NXT. I watched Lucha House Party defeat... Fantasma Elegato. I cannot. I, I never saw that happening. Like, El Fantasma, Santos Escobar. He must be uh, Iodel Fantasma. 
Uh, Santo Escobar must be furious. Now they're getting the rub here on on Raw. What the heck did they do? Oh no, maybe maybe they did something a little. Maybe they made a little show there with Molina, the boss to see. No, I would never say bad stuff like that. Never. But um, they took on the hurt business, and for the most part. Uh, Cedric Alexander went right after Grand Malik. That's good. Cedric Alexander is a fiery pit bull. Goes right after him. Uh, Sheldon Benjamin's a little bit more laid back. Uh, eventually, however, Cedric goes gets stuck in the corner. Grand Malik uh, did his flips up on him. Lindsay Dorado flies onto him. Does the tornado DDT. Was it a tornado DDT? I forget what it was, but he oh he did the a flying heart karana. Then uh, tried it for a tornado DDT. Cedric reversed that. And all of a sudden, Alec blinked. Shelton Benjamin got in the ring. And Shelton Benjamin ate a pin. But that's not good. You can't the Hurt Business losing to Lucha House Party. That was a shock. Um, eh, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then also another classic Legends moment. We see Tori Wilson talking to Nikki Cross. Oh my goodness. I, I Tori Wilson's not that tall. Like granted, she's like average woman height. What would you guys say? Hey, a little taller. 5'7", five, 5'8", five, something like that. Nikki Cross is freaking tiny. She was a whole head shorter than Tori Wilson. And of course, um, Angel Garza, he, he's extreme. He'll take both. But um, then he, they say that um, Carrie B? I should have wrote it down, darn it. Like the one singer was like backstage, and, and we thought, the boogeyman! The boogeyman always throws up, baby. Them worms hanging out of the mouth. Boogie 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 Man! Yep. Um, and then, of course, Angel Guy was so scared, he got rolled up by R Truth. Uh, R Truth got the 24 7 title back. It was a, it, because it was the Boogie Man, I'll give it a ham sandwich. And Rod Simmons comes in, just looks at Angel Garza. We're all waiting for it. Stares at him some more. Tilts his head the other way. Damn. And then we get into the main event. It was Keith Lee taking on Drew McIntyre. This was actually a really good classic match start. Um, they started off no selling each other's strikes. That they started no selling shoulder tackles until Keith Lee hit his shoulder tackle. This looked kind of snug. This looked good, and I think Drew McIntyre liked this. I think Keith Lee also liked it too. He's like, oh, this is a good. This, re this reminded him of, him of Pro Wrestling Gorilla, probably. It was a very hard hitting match. In the forearms, the stomp, the truth stomp to freaking Lee's back. That back of his head, that looked vicious. The stomp to Lee's head itself looked vicious. Uh, Lee pounced Drew over the barricade. That was good. Um, Lee, he would open Drew up, expose his ribs, uh, gut punches, vicious wind up. Really power, a big body, uh, big body slam. Somehow Drew managed an over the head belly to belly suplex. Uh, another big slam to Keith Lee. Uh, he power bombed Lee through through the table, and then Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre did his top rope Spanish fly. Oh wow, that was awesome. Uh, there wasn't a spirit bomb. Drew reversed that. They ran the ropes a little bit. He had a claymore. One, two, three. I'll tell you what. This was everything I wanted in this match. This was a surf and turf match. And then Goldberg has to show up for three minutes. And he's going to face... Why? Why Goldberg? Jeez, Drew, be safe. Don't let Goldberg drop you on, on your head intentionally or unintentionally. 
But yeah, Drew's going to face Goldberg at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. That was kind of like the downer of the whole show. Overall, it's a fairly entertaining show. Again, it's ups and downs. It's, it's nice, to see, nice to see the legends around. Meh. Of the show. Um, so with that, kind of the rest of the schedule for the week. Um, this will be going up probably Tuesday morning-ish. Uh, Tuesday night. Impact Wrestling! They're all done, I think. Well, at least I'll find out if they're all done. For all the recaps. Again, they're on the road to Hard to Kill. In about two weeks' time. Uh, Wednesday will be an AEW review show. Thursday, I'm off. Friday's SmackDown. And I'm off Saturday. Oh, wow. I'm going to relax Saturday. And Sunday, I don't have to do anything.